Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to finish off our introduction to the aggregation iterators, right? Which we're going to use over and over and over again in our DAX career. So uh, this will be a little bit easier, maybe a bit more fun. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, either way, I think it'll, by looking at the problem from a different angle, I think it'll help us make sure that we understand them as well as we think that we maybe do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in iterators.xlsx. I'm in the aggregate C table. And what we've got now is a bunch of finished, um, finished problems wherein there's a piece missing and we have to figure out what that missing piece is. So uh, here on problem 15, uh, we've derived this temp table to get the temp table right there. Uh, we've added this expression column, right, to get those values right there. There's the expression column. And uh, when we aggregated it, we got this number, this 27 bucks. What I need to know is what is the iterator that I used? Is it sum x, max x, min x, or average x, right? Well, the name of the iterator tells us which aggregation it uses. So what I want you to do is look at these four numbers right here and take a second and ask yourself, uh, is it the sum, the average, the min, or the max? So I'll go ahead and give you a second on that. Okay, so what'd you guess? Well, if you were like me, uh, it's not the sum because I could clearly see that uh, 27 appears in the list. So uh, 27 plus 9 is already bigger than 27, so it's not that. Is it the average? Well, the smallest and the biggest numbers are 9 and 27, so I'd figure the average would be somewhere between there. And it's not, it's at the tip top, which leaves either the min or the max. And uh, this pretty clearly for me is the biggest number in that series. So this should be max x. Right there where it says question mark, question mark, question mark. The iterator that we're using here is uh, max x. So let's go ahead and click in there and click D and see how we did. Yay, we got it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, number 16, same kind of a deal, right? Uh, uh, we've got uh, a table derivation that we did under this particular filter context, which brought us that temp table right there. We added this expression column to it, units times cost per to get the total cost for every single transaction. What I wanna know is which, uh, which iterator did we use? Sum x, average x, min x, or max x, with the knowledge, right, with the knowledge that from these four numbers right here, the aggregation gave us six. So what is this? Sum x, average x, min x, or max x. Take a second. Okay, so if you guessed uh, min x, then you'd guess correctly. So let's click in here and type in C. Yeah, because uh, this is the smallest number. Six dollars is the smallest number in this series. Therefore, we must have used min x. That was the iterator that we used. Okay. So here on problem 17, same kind of deal. Which iterator, right? They're not all going to be like this. In fact, we only got one more, but I still one last time want to know which iterator did we use, right? So uh, under particular filter context, we derived this temp table, or I should say we used this derivation to produce, to derive this temp table right here, right? The iterator added an expression column to it to produce those numbers, which is the sales for every single row. And then uh, it aggregated it to get 17 bucks, right? My question for you is which iterator did we use, right? Did we use sum x, average x, min x, or max x? So take a second and see if you can figure out which aggregation would have produced this number based on this expression column. Okay, so if you guessed average x, you'd be right. Um, it's not sum x because 27 is in that list. 27 is already bigger than 17, so it couldn't possibly be that, right? Uh, well, it's not min x because the smallest number in there is 9. It's not max x because the biggest number in there is 27. Uh, it's not sum x. We already talked about that, so it must be average x. So let's click in here and type in b. Assuming it'll let me click. Come on. B. There we go. Hey, sure enough, it's average x. Okay. Good, good, good. So I think you guys could get a sense of how these iterators work in terms of their naming convention. What does the name mean? So uh, here in this next set, right, I'm going to tell you what the iterator is. Uh, what you have to tell me is what is the definition of the expression column, right? We use this derivation to produce this temp table right here, right? Uh, now to get this expression column, you got to tell me what is the formula that would be there for argument two of this iterator. Is it units times price per unit? Units times cost per unit? Price per unit minus cost per unit, or just the number of units. So go ahead, take a second, see if you can figure it out. Okay, if you guessed C, you would be correct. Click here, click C. Oop, keyboard's not being responsive. There we go. Uh, so uh, C, for every, for every single row, we take the price per units and subtract the cost per units, right? 
Now, uh, you can tell pretty quickly it's not units times price per because two times seven would be 14. Uh, units times cost per, well, two times five would be 10, so it's certainly not that. It could technically be units if all we're looking at is the first row because two is indeed two. But when we go to the second row here, if it were just units, this would be uh, one and not three. So it has to be the price per unit minus the, co minus the cost per unit, which by the way is the margin for what it's worth for every single row. That row's margin, the margin per, okay? Cool, all right, let's keep going. Here on problem 19, right, same kind of deal. Uh, we derived this temp table, or I should say we used this derivation to derive this temp table, right? Uh, this is the act, this is the result. So we got this temp table with a filter context of type equals to go, right? We're gonna sum up the results of the expression column. What I wanna know is what is the definition of that expression column? How did I get 14, 9, 27, and 18, okay? Based on this temp table right here. So which of these expression column definitions would produce these numbers right here? So go ahead, pause it if you have to, pause the video for a have to, if you want a little more time. See if you can't figure out which one it is. Okay, so uh, if you guessed if you guessed A, or you just went through the list and that was the first one that you came up with, you'd be correct, right? This is a nice easy one, right? So for every single row, we take the number of units, we multiply it by the price per unit. So two times seven is 14, one times nine is nine, three times nine is 27, and two times nine is 18. If you used any of these other formulas, you would get wildly different numbers for your expression column. Okay, so here on problem 20, right? Uh, we know what the definition for the expression column is, we know what the iterator is. Is it max x, min x, average x, sum x? We even know the derivation, right? What I want you to tell me is, what is the filter context that based on this derivation would produce this temp table right here, right? So uh, your options are a filter context that has a filter of type equals dine in, a filter context that has one filter for type equals to go, a filter context that has one filter for shift equals dinner, or lastly, a filter context with two filters, one for shift equals dinner and one for type equals to go. And if you want to, you can kind of cheat by clicking around up here and seeing what comes up here on this derivation. That'll help you quite a bit. But uh, you know what? It, it, you can do that if you want to, or you could just look at the values in here and try and figure out which one of these it could possibly be. So go ahead, take a second, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so if you answered, if you answered to go B, you'd be correct, right? Uh, we know it's not dine-in because I don't see any dine-in rows right there. Uh, it could definitely be to go, which ends up being the correct answer because all I see is to go, right? But if you'll notice, right, I see to go, but I see lunch and dinner values, which is why it couldn't be option D, which is dinner and to go, because if it was both of these filters, uh, we wouldn't see any of the lunch values. We would just see that dinner value. Also, it can't uh, just be dinner, right? Because I see dinner and lunch. So the option's got to be, or the answer's got to be B, type equals to go, right? Which for what it's worth, looks like that, produces that temp table, which matches that one exactly. Okay, fantastic. So uh, one last one, uh, same kind of problem. What is the filter context, right? Uh, we've actually got the same exact formula right here. Actually, it's very close. Not exactly the same. This is a max X. This is a min X. Uh, but I'm telling you what the iterator is, right? It's min x. I'm telling you what the definition of our expression column is. It's units times price per unit. I'm telling you which derivation we're choosing. We're choosing the mini derivation, or I should say the, the physical table derivation, where if we ask for a table by name, we get all the visible rows of that table. What I want you to tell me is what is the filter context that uh, wherein if I were to ask for this derivation, I would get this temp table right here. Is it type equals dine in, type equals to go, shift equals dinner, or shift equals dinner and type equals to go. Which of those four is it? So go ahead, take a second, see if you can't figure it out. Okay, so if you guessed, if you guessed C, dinner, you would be correct, right? So how do we know it's not the first one? How do we know it's not dine-in? Well, uh, I could see both dine-in and to-go values right there, so it couldn't possibly be that one. Uh, how do we know it's not to go? Well, same same deal. Uh, if it was to go, I would only see to go values, but I see both to go and dine in values. Uh, so which leaves it could be either C or D, shift equals dinner or shift equals dinner and type equals to go, okay? Now, if it was this option here, D, 
uh, we would only see dinner values, which is true, we do only see dinner values, but we would also only see to-go values. And we see both to-go and dine-in. Therefore, it can't be option D, it's gotta be option C. And if you wanna click up here <laughs> and see uh, that filter context, what derivations are possible, you will see that this matches that right there. Okay, so I think you guys uh, have sufficient knowledge of these basic aggregation iterators to start working with them. Uh, in a second, I'm going to show you why we spent so much darn time talking about these and making sure that you did them over and over and over again. Okay, see you next video.